Hi, welcome to this live stream. My name is Jeff Harmon. I'm the co-founder of Angel Studios. And today we've got a <coughs> special live stream. We're going to talk about after death, a bunch of the responses we've had to it. We've got a special guest, Stephen Gray. So start asking. He's the director of after death, and he's going to uh, be able to answer any questions. Just put them in the chats. And then we've got stories, reviews, rankings, and so like a bunch of really cool stuff to share with you. Um, first off, if you haven't seen the film After Death, you need to go watch it. You go to angel.com slash life after, or another way to get it is if you go to join the angel guild, you can get even like a, um, a bet, like the best deal is at the angel guild. So you can get, when you join the angel guild, you get a vote on the shows that come on to angel studios, like after death, you actually would have been able to watch after death in advance and get a vote on it to decide whether or not it comes to theaters. And then when you join the Angel Guild, it's 20 bucks a month. You'll get two free movie tickets to every Angel Studios theatrical re release. So if you join today, the Angel Guild, you get two free movie tickets to After Death. Then you get two free movie tickets to The Shift immediately. That's a $60 value just for the first month of $20. And then you're going to get two free tickets to the Cabrini film in, um, in March. So you can join the Angel Guild. You get a vote on product projects that come into Angel Studios, and you get two free tickets to every single movie, including After Death. So before we get to um, the – and also this week, the, the After Death had such a huge response that they the theaters increased the number of screens. So it is everywhere. You can watch uh, – this weekend, you can watch After Death everywhere, not just in a few select spots. It's, it's, it's all over the place. So um, – so we're going to bring on, let's bring on director of After Death, Stephen Gray. And you've been on a big media tour, Stephen. How, how is that? How's that been going? It's been going great. You know, the, the response on the film is, you know, it's, it's amazing. Um, it's, it's been such an honor to be able to go around and, you know, share more about kind of the backstory of the film and, uh, you know, some, some of the stories and just get people to come out of the theaters and, and watch this. Yeah. Yeah, and have have you seen in person? Like people have been talking to you because we've seen tons of comments on social media, which we'll get some of those up in a bit. But have you seen? Have you had any in person like uh, reactions? Yeah, actually, it's funny. Um, so on opening night, uh, Jason uh, Pamer and myself watched it in Seattle. So Jason's one of the producers on After Death, and uh, we were sitting in the back row, just kind of you know flies on the wall, uh, kind of soaking it in, and, and you know just seeing a kind of a regular audience response you know and I love being in the room with an audience like that because you know I don't know any of these people and just kind of hearing some of the gasps and and laughs and all of that stuff that only kind of happens in, in a theater setting right it's, it's quite an amazing experience but right at the end there was a, a lady who stood up and she just shouts is uh Steven or Jason here <laughs> <laughs> And sure enough, you know, we are. And Jason had announced uh, that we're going to be watching it and opening, I think, one of the live streams before it played. And so uh, she came out and uh, called us out. <laughs> it was awesome um, to be able that's to awesome. connect with that's someone so there. That's so great. Yeah. yeah, I went and saw, I think it was Friday night. And maybe it was Saturday. I don't remember. I snuck into a theater just alone just to watch. It was sold out. I actually took one of those chairs that's next to the handicap spot. That's my secret when I go to movies is, like, if I'm too late, there's a chair that's next to the handicap spot, and when you buy it, it's like, you're going to have to surrender this chair if somebody actually comes in that has a wheelchair. So <laughs> I, I steal those. Um, but <laughs> and, and I've never even had anybody. But anyway, I grabbed that chair, <laughs> and <laughs> so I'm watching it and watching the whole entire reaction, and I had a neighbor that lives down the street from me come up right afterwards and just say, you you helped with this film, right? And I, I said yes. And she was just like, I know this person that's had an after death experience. I know this person. <laughs> like she was wow. so excited about. It. She's like, I just love these types of films, and it it's a beautiful yeah. film. Like it's such a great experience inside the theater because of the way that mm. you did these. Um, like, what, how did you come up with the visuals? Did you have to like get on acid? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> They're so cool. Uh, yeah, anyway, sorry. They're, they're I, it's a cool. question I had while yeah. I was watching. I was like, this this is, feels like somebody <laughs> that. <laughs> I mean, I haven't had a near death experience, but you know, I'm, I'm kind of very curiously living through the experience of you know the people I sat across from the interview chair. So as as I'm hearing their stories and their accounts, you know, I mean, they got very visual in their descriptions, 
and I tried taking some of that, and you know, we have to be art, you know, artistic and interpreting, you know, some of that and what we can do on screen. But actually, as a, as a child, you know, I always kind of gazed up into the into the starry night, and uh, you know, just always thought about space and sort of the vastness of it. Space is just you know infinite, and the galaxies that are contained in there is just you know so much to kind of think about, and so. I wanted to kind of ground some of these visuals of this sort of celestial realm uh, in something that we can observe, like with NASA and, and different kind of imagery of, of space. So that's kind of where a lot of the inspiration came from. But we worked with unbelievable VFX artists uh, mm -hmm. that really, you know, brought this to life. I also think it's interesting when you dive down to a cellular level how similar it looks to things in space, right? That, yeah, yeah. That it's like the world. The, it's like the universe kind of repeats itself all the way down through exactly. the design, all the way down to our yeah. cellular DNA levels. Where mm -hmm. we're designed the whole way through. It's, it's very cool. It's amazing. Actually, actually, a lot oh. of the a lot of the visuals that we did of cos in the cosmic space was done practically, and it was with uh, like uh, you know slides and and kind of microscopic scales. So mm -hmm. it looks like we got a question. Do you, do you Terrence? Do you want to read that? Yeah. Will this be a spoiler? Should I see it before uh, taking part in the review? Uh, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're going to do a review on the film, I think it's good to watch it. Um, then you, <laughs> you know, you get an idea of, of what what the film is, and yeah, for sure. Or I think he's saying, if, as we go through it, are we going to give spoilers? But it, oh, should he, should in, he in this keep live watching? Stream. Yeah, we'll try oh, to avoid yeah, yeah. Spoil keep it. watching. Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll avoid it. Don't we'll worry. avoid spoilers. Yeah, but yeah. there's we'll, so we'll much cool a few stuff things, to talk but... about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> keep watching. All right, um, we're gonna watch a special film reaction from uh, Pastor Miles McPherson. Hey, what's up, family? Pastor Miles here. You know, I've been preaching the gospel uh, ever since I got saved in 1984. And one of the things that is the most important part of the gospel is life after death. The movie After Death captures that concept so clearly, so convincingly that I can encourage all of you not only to go see it, but make sure you have your friends who don't believe in God to go see this movie. And God is going to do something amazing in their life. God bless you. Amazing. Uh, what's your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, that's just something we're seeing over and over again. It's just, you know, how I think this film is just, it opens up that kind of, it, you know, that, that question, you know, what happens after we die? And it's really a film for everyone. I think it's going to ultimately point to the hope that we have. You know, we have God, we have a creator who loves us and, and made all of us. And I think... Uh, I want to encourage everyone, you know, whether they have a faith or not, to come out and watch this film. Be challenged. Great. Yeah, I. Um, we've seen, and we'll get to some of these reactions, but I was saying that there was an employee in our company that said that after he watched the movie, he reached out to a brother he hadn't talked to in years, you know, to, to make amends. And, mm -hmm. um, and I, can, can we pull up a, a message I got? Um, I sent it over just before the live stream, there's this message I got from a friend and I'm keeping, it says, Hey Jeff, one of my friends lost her son last month in a car accident. I wanted to share her recent post. And then this is what the person posted. They posted the movie poster and said, just watched after death in the theater. And I have to say it brought me great comfort. I feel lighter. And my, my friend was like, your, your company's making a difference. And this is a, mm. I don't even know if this friend's a believer. Um, it's from university down in Sao Paulo, Brazil, when I was in Brazil. It was a friend that I met down there. And, wow. um, but. Yeah, that's something, it's something we're hearing from so many people. You know, they have, a lot of people have tragic stories. You know, we've heard from lots of uh, parents who've lost their kids or siblings have lost their other sibling. And, you know, just painful experiences in this life. But I think this, this film is able to offer that hope. And it's these stories, you know. It's kind of mm -hmm. the miracle of these people who are dead for such a long period of time. And they're kind of giving us a glimpse into, you know, what, what the life is to come. What did you, you, you were telling, about a, telling me about an experience of a bunch of friends you had that watched it or a group that you were it's, with. Yeah. So, I mean, I made this film in response to grief. Uh, so my brother-in-law, who, who is uh, 36 years old when he was killed by a car wreck. And, uh, 
you know, which caused me to ask these questions about life after. And so, you know, all these years later, working on this film, you know, you know for seven years, um, finally it's playing, you know, in our hometown and actually at the theater that I would go to with my brother-in-law regularly. He was my, my, my guy that I would go to movies with. And uh, I've, I, you know, I don't really have someone like that in my life anymore. And so what I did was uh, my wife and I, uh, this past Monday, we went to that theater, honestly, the same auditorium that I would go to with, with my brother-in-law, with all of his best friends, all of his co-workers, and just a group of us, we, we you know, sat and watched it together. And, uh, I mean, we were all crying <laughs> at the end, you know, like his name comes up at the end. We made this film in memory of Marco and Eli Kordick, his dad, and uh, who both had passed. And, uh, yeah, it was just, it was a lot to take in. Um, there was a lot of questions, and we had you know, an amazing conversation for a few hours after. Yeah. I, um, I had a, a guy, a neighbor of mine, a, a different neighbor. <clears throat> He's in his, must be in his seventies now. And he said that when he was younger, he was electrocuted and killed for a significant period of time before his, uh, minister prayed over him and he was revived and he had an experience and he came up to me at church and he said, I, he said, this film is so spot on to exactly what it's like. And, wow. um, it was, it was beautiful. He said, more people need to see this film. Um, so there's, a um, we're going to get another, we're going to look at some of the most interesting reactions from the press. Now this is, this is where it gets <laughs> kind of fun. Um, <laughs> We have a record-breaking release. This is the fifth. Uh, we were top five in the box office for opening weekend. I think we were number four, right? Yeah, that's and then right. Making History for Documentary Films opened up as the highest-grossing faith-based documentary of all time. And Amazing. it is the 12th highest-grossing opening weekend of all time for any documentary. You got an A-minus cinema score. Um, which is like there are, there are very few films that even get an A, any type of A cinema score. There's A minus, A, and A plus. And you've got it's an A wild. minus. And um, what does it feel like to actually have this film going down in history? I mean, by, by Monday, we think this film's going to pass over $10 million in the box office. What, what do you, what is this, what's this like? You've done documentaries before, <laughs> right? Yeah, but short short talks. No, no, I've never. This is my first feature film, so uh -huh. um, yeah. So no, it's. Uh, I mean, I I fully recognize and realize that this is such a rare thing. Not only for a film to be able to get out to theaters, but this many theaters and to partner with Angel Studios at such an amazing time. Um, and so yeah, I'm completely blown away by the response and and to make those um, milestones. I mean, I can't take full credit. There's, it's a combination of so many different things, right? It's, it's Angel Studios is, is a big part to play, obviously, in the dis distribution. Um, but filmmaking is a team team sport, you know. Cypher yeah. Studios, the the two pr you know two producers that are working on this, Jens and Jason, uh, played a huge part. Uh, my my co co uh, director Chris Racky, um, and then you know amazing DP, amazing composer, and a bunch of actors and artists, and the people that opened up and shared their story that were willing to you know, open up on a personal level and, you know, let us kind of take a peek into their, their life and their yeah. experiences. And they shared some really, really personal stuff. It was, yeah, it was so, um, and it, what people need to understand is yes, this is a documentary film and it's, but it's one of the, like, it's very hard to become one of the top documentaries of all time. Like this is not a small thing and it's, the reason why is because this is a film that you want to watch in theaters. The visuals yeah. are just like, I, it's Indy Wire who wrote this blistering review. Like they hated the movie, right? Or I don't yeah. know if he hated the movie. He hated the idea that's or the ideas that are spread in the movie. He's just like, right. he's like, this is just, um, what did he, he went really far out of his way to basically be like everybody who, who comes back from the dead, uh, they're, they're making businesses or something. And it's like, well, there are dozens and dozens. Of, if you go to the Angel Studios app and look at the After Death channel, there are so mm -hmm. many people submitting stories that are not actually writing books or selling books. The people who right. wrote books yeah. and sell books 
were called to. Like they, you'll see yeah. in the film, yeah. they're called by God to do this. It's part of their mission. Right. While there are so many others that are coming online inside the angel app in the after death channel and they're leaving their stories that are very similar. And, but he said, he said, Christians wait. Yeah. So this is how you get into the app. If you go into the app and you click on, um, the add a story tab, you can record your own story and submit it to the after death theater. And if you just go into the theater, you can also watch everybody else's stories. So that's how you do it. But when, um, IndieWire covers it. He uses this like super colorful language that I thought I was laughing my head off because he's actually a good yes. writer, but it's just like blistering. Like it's like a roast. It's not like a, mm-hmm. he was having a little too much fun. And but one yeah. thing he said is he said believers think that this world is just kind of waiting for the universe's most killer light show. Is that how he said it? Something like that. The universe is <laughs> something like that. Yeah. The universe's most killer light show. And it, that is kind of true that we're like, there's a lot more after like, yes, life is beautiful mm-hmm. and God has given us this life to enjoy and to mm-hmm. learn and grow. But when you pass to the other side, it's just the beginning and there is, that's the when the real, that's when it really just begins, yeah. right? So Yeah. Well, I, I was thinking it's interesting like that in the Variety article too, you know, first of all, I'm, I'm you know, humbled that, you know, they're, they're talking about it, right? They're talking about the film. But, um, you know, in terms of like critique, I, I'm, I would love to see critiques, you know, on the filmmaking side of it, you know, like, you yeah, know, feel free to rip rather it to than shreds critiquing if, if, the, they're critiquing <laughs> the people you interviewed, they're critiquing yeah, that's right, the stories. Yeah, they're critiquing the stories, the people. They're critiquing yeah. everything but the actual filmmaking. <laughs> they're right. like, but this is what is part of being part of the global conversation. This is why cinematic experiences, and this is why so many people join the Angel Guild, is because cinematic experiences change people. It's an experience yeah. where everybody gives up all of their distractions, walks into a theater, and they have this experience that's um, that the Rabbit Room blog calls almost a sacramental experience, where you're all mm. surrendered to everything, and you're getting this message together as a community, and you have no pause button, mm-hmm. no play button, you're focused. And it allows people to actually have like heart-changing experiences. And yeah. so um, this, this, is, this is what happens. When you go into the big screen, you change culture and you're seeing mm-hmm. it by all these reviews. Some of them are attacking, some of them. I mean, it's the first time that Angel Studios has had a film where in the first weekend, IndieWire, the first day, IndieWire, New York Times, CNN, uh, what was some, there's some other huge publications all went and watched the movie. Well, actually, yeah. I think a few of them based on their reviews didn't watch the movie, but they all went and talked <laughs> about like they the watched movie. A, a different movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, yeah, they watched a couple of trailers <laughs> and then read, like, did some Google, like, Wikipedia searches on something. <laughs> but, um, but they they wrote about this film because it's mattering to culture, and so this is part yeah. of being part of the cultural conversation, even the mm-hmm. the good and the bad. Yeah. I mean, there's there's a couple things that we can't ignore, right? The fact that it's playing on over 2,700 screens across North America. Um, obviously, that you know, there's a demand. And they for, increase for a the number like of this. screens. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah, and that it's like made the headlines it has, but also, you know, there's this reality of these people died. You know, they clinically died by all accounts. Um, doctors, you know, declaring them dead. There's no heartbeat. There's no brain activity. And some of them are, are long, right? The Pam Reynolds is over an hour. Uh, Dean Braxton was an hour and 45 minutes. It's a long time to be to be gone and without brain damage coming back. And then they're talking about these experiences. So, like, yeah, like I say, it's it's one thing to go ahead and try to rip the you know film to shreds in terms of the you know the the filmmaking process. But I'm not seeing a lot of that. I'm seeing more if it, if there's hit pieces on the film, it's about this reality of heaven and the, and the reality of hell. And that's just, that's what people are reporting all around the world. You know, 4,000 recorded accounts with Dr. Jeffrey Long from every country basically around the world, you know, and they're mm-hmm. all clinically dead and they're describing something that perfectly overlaps. It's, it's hard yeah. to ignore. And you can experience the film yourself. Just go to angel.com slash life after. You can buy tickets directly or you can join the Angel Guild, 20 bucks a month, and you get two tickets to After Death, two tickets to The Shift, which starts in December, two tickets to Cabrini coming up in March, and every single Angel Studios theatrical release. And you get a vote on the films that come into Angel Studios. 
So um, we are going to go to some more. We have some powerful film reactions. Let's let's show let's show some of these. Um, there's a article that about the article about uh, the person who's forgiving their father. Maybe it's not a film reaction. Let's see. Okay. All right. A documentary experience you will not want to miss after death. One woman wrote on the After Death Movie Facebook page that the film helped her forgive her father. The story of the man that hated his dad on After Death changed me. I hated my dad so much. Could not forgive him for the evil things he did to my mom. I never wanted to forgive him. But God made me realize my dad was a sick man. I'm glad I, my hate for him is over. It takes a lot of energy and hate for 71 years, she wrote. Regardless, uh, okay, there was another one. Regardless of whether, this is, a, this is another one. So regardless of whether you land on, where you land on this issue, listening to the stories related in the after death, after death is consistently captivating. Your opinion on the concept of the afterlife will be challenged and brought into greater focus. This is ILSeat.com, film critic. And I think, I think it's interesting because normally, historically, it feels like as people of faith, we're forced to get on our heels and be like, oh, let me explain why this theory doesn't negate faith or why this right. different piece of evidence doesn't negate faith. And this film... I'm watching these reviews online and it's throwing the opposite direction. You're giving hard evidence of things that happen and experiences that happen where people are out of their bodies and they're seeing yeah. what's happening in the room and these and it's not a small number. And what what I've noticed is it feels like they're they're on their heels now going, well, all these experiences, thousands of them it's just got to be drugs. <laughs> <Or either. laughs> go, <Yeah>. go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's something that we can't get it to, into everything in the film because, you know, it's an hour and 42 minutes, uh, you know, and there's only so much you can jam in there. But, you know, one of the interesting things I thought in terms of uh, that kind of, you know, idea of that maybe this is like a chemical process in the brain. Um, there's actually a, a study that was done with Dr. Bruce Grayson where it was in the ER, uh, in the ER room in, in hospitals, when patients are brought in um, by paramedics and they're not sure like how they went unconscious, some some cases you know it, it could be that it was from uh, a narcotic. They're given an anti-narcotic, uh, basically which kind of treats the brain and, and stops any kind of chemical reaction from that. But what it also does is it stops the neurotransmitters from being able to uh, create any any endorphins. So the brain's natural ability to create any kind of you know, heightenedness or whatever sensation uh, actually stops completely. And people report having near-death experiences, both who have been given that or, you know, those who, who are not given that. You know, we talk about in the film, Dr. or uh, John Burke, actually, uh, the author of Imagine Heaven, you know, he mentions you can't really have, you know, mass hallucin Mass hallucinations is just kind of a, like you are saying with drugs, is, is kind of an odd... Uh, Conclusion. Well, you know? it's a, yeah, and it's a harder. Really only... It's harder to believe than the actual just idea that there's an afterlife. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like it takes more faith. It, like once you get into the evidence, it might take more faith to believe that. Um, yeah. Obviously, we're biased. We're believers. So, it, but sure. the uh, but it, it it is it is interesting to watch because it does challenge you. And um, I'm going to. Um, now, now let's let's take some stories from the audience. Um, what um, you you we've been getting an outpouring of love for this project, and um, we want to listen to some of the experiences you have. Um, but before we do that, we want to let you know that you can share the experience of the film. So let's go back to the app and show it one more time. If you Go to the Angel app, then go to the After Death Theater, and then go to your story. You can share your story on the app. And then let's, let's show a clip of somebody who has submitted to the app. Hi, everybody. We're at the After Death premiere. How about that? New film is being distributed by Angel Studios, and I'm very excited to be here. The project been under development for quite a while. And uh, we've got a lot of really happy people about this. 
You know something? I think I suspect you have a story too. I I was killed in a car crash in 1989 on the way to church. I never really planned to talk about it because it was uh, very painful, but it was also a trip to heaven. Um, and I wasn't planning to die that day, but I I was ready when the time came. So I didn't want to come back and talk about heaven either. But everyone knew that something was going on because I was not myself after I came back. Finally, somebody kind of drew it out of me who, who I knew I could trust. And uh, his question was, why do you think that happened to you if you were supposed to keep it a secret? Let me say this to you. We all have a story. Sometimes you need to decide to turn your test into a testimony. You need to decide to take your pain and make a purpose out of it. And you can do that on the Angel Studios app. And that means other people will benefit from your story. They'll learn from your story, and they should. I think that's why we're here, to help everyone else get there. And I think we have a lot of work to do. So consider doing that prayerfully. Add your story to the Angel Studios app. If I don't see you here, I want to see you there. So if you just go to angel.com slash my NDE for my near-death experience, my NDE, you can submit in the Angel app. Let's let's jump into some reactions. Can we pull up a clip of um, the one with dealing with grief? My husband and I just came back from watching the movie After Death, and uh, wow. We've always gone to church and we've heard the stories that other people tell and they're kind of similar to the stories that we heard others tell on the on the uh, movie. But when you have a loved one die that you care so much about and then you come to recognize the fact that you know maybe when they died they didn't want to come back because it's too painful to be here with some of the things that they had to go through. I watched my mother die, and it was a grueling experience. I wanted to know where she went. I felt like she was going to be with the Lord. She praised him morning, noon, and night when she was here with me. But um, as as you miss them, and you want to know that they're okay, and I know that she's in a better place than I am. But I just, I needed to know more. I wanted to know where she went and what, what could she be experiencing wherever she is. And this movie, um, Deep, um, helped me to understand and to bridge the gap uh, between the life and the death. And I realized she's, she's in a better place. And you hear that all the time. But to hear others talk about their experiences, um, it, it solidified it for me. It is a profoundly deep movie. It's, it's very moving, especially if you have had a loved one pass away. I'm very thankful to all of you who promoted this movie and made this movie. I find that the movies with uh, Angel Studios, they, they have meaning. They have meaning, and I've since signed up for the guild uh, to be able to look at other movies and help determine what movies should go on that screen. And I love the previews that are coming. And so, again, I just want to thank you today. You made my heart <laughs> feel better. You've made my, my mind sounder. And... You've helped me just to understand what took place with my mom and where she is. Mm, that's awesome. Oh my goodness. That's so what profound. Do you, what do you, Stephen, what do you, uh, what advice do you have just from your experience for people that are dealing with grief? Because I think a lot of the people, I mean, that, that note that was sent to me was somebody who's dealing with grief. 
and it brought lightness. What what do, what do you what are they going to find in this film, and why why does it help? Well, I think you know she just encapsulated you know the my experience uh, as well, even just making this film. And that was really the, the hope for, you know, cr the creation of this movie. It's amazing that, you know, we're having the turnout that we are uh, in, in terms of the box office and making the headlines. But honestly, um, it's the reactions of people who are watching it uh, is what, you know, is the whole purpose for making the film. Um, for me on it, I, I struggled with in the beginning, you know, what, what I really believed about, you know, heaven and, and whether that was real or not. Um, but I also struggled with, you know, why is he gone? And, and why, you know, like, why do some people live and some people don't? And it just didn't make any sense to me. But after, you know, hearing of these, these different accounts, like Don Piper, he talks about in the film, you know, that was, that was better. That was more real than, than this life here. You know, he even says like for himself, mm -hmm. you know, he did survive the car wreck, but some ways he kind of wishes that he hadn't. And yet there's, there's purpose for him to be here. And so he's happy to be here, but he's also looking forward to when God calls him home. And um, that just made me think and reflect and that's on... That's somebody who went through a horrific car accident. Yeah, And exactly. he's ready to go again. Yeah, I know. But that just made me, you know, think about, you know, my, I think my brother-in-law, Marco, is in a better place. You know, and it's, and it's here, it's us that, that grief, right? And, and we go through grief, um, and I think it's directly correlated with, you know, how much we love someone is how much we're going to grieve here, right? Because we miss yeah. them, we miss their presence. I had a... In the 2020 pandemic, we had a little dog, a little cockapoo that my, uh, she was six at the time, my six-year-old just loved. And mm -hmm. the dog ran out in the road, chased a car and got ran over, chased a motorcycle and then got ran over by the car behind it. Oh, and no. we watched the dog, like ran out there, picked her up, carried the dog in and then watched my six-year-old holding the dog as it took its last breaths and its heartbeat stopped and um and watching her grief and then trying to explain like that for her or trying to help her through that grief and the the, the what came to me is i said she said i don't i don't like this and i said well if you didn't have the memories of her, you wouldn't feel this pain, right? And she said, mm -hmm. yeah. And I said, would you trade the memories to not feel this pain? Would you trade your experiences with this dog to not feel the pain that you're feeling right now? And she said, never. And I said, well, that's the price of love. That's the price of the joy and happiness we get during this life is that, um, that pain when we have to part and, uh, and the deeper the pain, the more love you've experienced. Yeah. But that, it wasn't my words. It was, you know, just some inspiration for her. But we call back to that often that when yeah. you move, like we li we've lived in Brazil. We moved to Brazil um, a year and a half ago and spent almost a year in Brazil to launch The Chosen in Brazil. Mm. My family's, my wife is Brazilian. And... So we went down there and spent a whole bunch of time launching The Chosen. And when the kids were leaving, they're like, oh, we have to leave again and we're going to leave all our friends. And then we brought back up the dog and how yeah. don't you like it's a good thing that you're you're feeling this much pain leaving and embrace the pain. And because um, it shows how much joy and happiness you've experienced. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, grief is something that, you know, Mary and Don both had, you know, experienced as parents losing, losing a child, both of them. And, um, it's unimaginable pain. And they talk about, you know, grief is something that you can't get around. So you have to go through. Um, yep. but you know, I think we, we all want to know, you know, is there something after, you know, and, and we may have, you know, different, a faith or, or, or hear about heaven and all that, but we, we really want to know. And, um, I think, you know, out of 14 people that are in the film who clinically die between seconds of an hour and four to five minutes, they point to this ultimate reality that, yes, life does go on. And I think that, that gives us tremendous hope for here on Earth. I love that. I love that. Let's go to clip number two. I just finished watching the premiere of After Death, and I wanted to share uh, a special story that I had. Uh, the movie itself 
will help your thoughts and mind be turned towards the most important things, which is to love other people while you're here. Um, in 04, I was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer and went through a lot of chemotherapy, radiation, and a bone marrow transplant. And uh, it was in that moment of my bone marrow transplant where, if you're not aware of it, your cells get killed off and your body is the most uh, susceptible to sickness and death and infection. And uh, my body was not doing very well at that time. In fact, there was a night where I felt my body dying. Um, and this movie really helped me understand my experience related to what others had gone through and that feeling of dying uh, or getting very, very close to it. Uh, but I think the, the movie really needs to be seen by everybody because it helps us and helped me, even though I've had many experiences through my treatments and, and the near-death experiences I've had, it's, it helped me remember that this life is about loving others and that when we take that love, it multiplies. And the times where I've remembered why I was here on this earth, that I was told, this is why you're still here. It's not because we want you to you know, be, be just part of your family and be a husband and a father, but it's to share the love of Jesus Christ. And as that love goes out, even if it's just a kind act of holding a door for somebody or finding somebody that might need an extra few dollars, or maybe it's a listening ear, it doesn't always have to be about just proselytizing. Sometimes the best proselytizing is just being kind. So thank you for everybody who put this movie on. Um, and I'm thankful for all the stories uh, and you can feel the truthfulness. And if you ever wanted to have a way to not feel so bad about life and be motivated to be able to go out and build some happiness with others, uh, this, is, this is the movie to share and to watch and to experience and then pray for, for just telling your Heavenly Father how thankful you are to be able to have a little closer insight to the next section of our life, which will happen. So. Go see it, go share it, pay it forward. It makes a difference. All right, Stephen, what's your thoughts? Yeah, it's, I mean, getting news like that, right? Like, I think that kind of, again, that kind of puts life into perspective. Um, you know, when someone's kind of given a diagnosis and they're, you know, challenged with that, you know, we, we're all going to die. And sort of like that, you know, the mortality, it's, it's difficult to grapple with, but... I mean, this film is just kind of, again, spreading that hope, right? And, and giving kind of a renewed sense of purpose for people. Um, and I, that's, I think everyone should watch this. The other thing, too, I was going to say was, I mean, we're, you're hearing these stories of people who are sharing their experiences and, and sharing their reactions in the app. I think that's a great way to, if you're, if you're curious about the film and wanna, you want to see the impact it's having, just go to the app. And, he, and you can scroll through and see all these different stories, you know? And I think that kind of points to you know, what this film is doing for people. And I think that's, that's a great uh, example of, you know, why you should go to the theater and watch it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you're not sure about going, just go, go, go watch this. So we're going to, you can share your story by going to angel.com slash my N D E, which is near death experience. And now let's, if, do we have any questions that you want to throw up and we'll do a Q&A from the audience. But go ahead, Stephen, while they're getting those ready. Yeah, it looks like there's some questions that were coming in. Um, a lot of people were asking, uh, you know, when is the DVD available and is it going to be available on streaming? Um, so right now the, the film is, is playing exclusively in theaters. So we want people to come out and watch this uh, film in theaters, uh, especially in North America and Canada and the United States. We're opening up to you know, over 2,700 theaters now, which is unbelievable. So. Uh, yeah, we want you to be able to come and watch it in that in that uh, way. I think because it's it's made for mm -hmm. a theatrical experience. It's um, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Like it will be eventually be on Blu-ray. It'll eventually be on D DVD. There's no dates announced. It will also be available in the Angel Guild. So that will be the first place it will go after it's in theaters. Is it will go to the Angel Guild, and you'll have exclusive access to stream it. But just joining the Angel Guild right now, you'll get two free tickets to the movie. Then you'll get two free movie tickets to the shift. Then you'll get two free movie tickets to Cabrini. And you just get a like, and you get early access to all the content, even after death when it comes. So that's that's one way to do it. A true, Hummingbird says, I truly hope this movie comes to my town. I live in Waycross, Georgia. How can I find out? If you go to angel.com slash after death, you can pull up 
all the areas where the movie's at. And if it's not in your area, you, you can request, there's a, just a way to click and call your theater and you can ask them to, to bring it to your, to your town. But most of the country, it's like 95 plus percent of everybody has access to this movie right now. We've, I think a, a few days ago, we had we heard some people up here in Canada that were, uh, you know, it wasn't playing in their area. But you know, if they requested the theater though enough times, you know, there, it's going to be going to the demand is right. going to be there. They're going to bring it there. So it's, it's a great way. To and call. So, some local theaters, they'll like even just bring it for like a few days if there's enough requests. They'll be like, yeah. hey, we're going to put on a special event where this this movie's on for a few days. What else do we got? Um, Patricia says, regarding the man who died in the car crash, is there a reason you did not mention the man who got in the car and prayed for him? I, I don't have enough knowledge of the film to... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it. that's Don Piper, uh, 90 Minutes in Heaven. There, there's some, you know, parts of the stories of, di of different people's stories where, you know, we can't include everything and it's just, uh, it's just being selective, um, not for the purpose of trying to hide something, but... Um, you know, an hour and 42 minutes, it's like, what are the, what are the pieces of, of the story that we want to include that kind of tells this connecting story? Um, and so to do that part, you know, we, we did have a version of, of the film earlier in, in our, you know, editing process that included that, but you know, you gotta, you gotta have a good like six, seven minutes to, to carve out, to, to tell that part. It's an amazing part of the story. I mean, the, the true part is that a man who, you know, Anita on a record, who's in the film, her late husband, and she she actually saw the, the she saw the aftermath of the car wreck. She was one of the first people there on the scene, so she talks about that in the film. But her, her late husband actually uh, heard this voice to go and pray for the man in the car, you know. And he goes and checks, and he doesn't have a pulse, and um, he still feels compelled to pray. And so he prays for Don, and oh, consistently over and over and over, and Don comes back. You know, and he doesn't have uh, brain damage. He doesn't have internal uh, internal damage, even though his body sustained massive injuries. And uh, you know, it's it's he's kind of a walking miracle because of it. That's beautiful. What else do we got? Anonymous. Okay. Have you heard of anyone who has who was not religious change or have faith change after watching this film? Yes. Uh, so the film, out of 14 people, uh, three were former atheists. Um, so the, the, the kind of hero story is Howard Storm because it's probably the, you know, the biggest change, uh, even though three atheists becoming theists, are, that's a big change. Um, Howard Storm goes from a university professor, atheist, uh, to uh, taking 90% pay cut and becoming a minister for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. Have you seen anybody that's watched the film and just switched so i feel like this movie is gonna it's gonna require people to you know sit on it and process it and you know, we've heard from people that mm -hmm. have you know they're going to watch it a few times in the theater because there's just mm -hmm. it, it's dense in terms of the story and there's just so much to take in um i think it's gonna it's gonna need probably a few watches a, or, or some I have time a, a father that talked to me and he said that his son who has kind of gone wayward um, he said, my son called me and said that he had watched the movie and said, dad, this is a really important movie. And his son has struggled to believe it all. And then he got a text message. I went and watched it again. Like it's giving him, it's just yeah. a perspective he's never seen when he goes to university or it's like, yeah. it's like this, this view that nobody's talking about. Yeah. And, um, so I I know I know there's that experience. Um, there I think um, I just talked to a just today a Hollywood executive who said that he went and watched the movie and he just said mm. I'm still thinking about it. Um, yeah. He's like I didn't. He's like it actually brought me a tremendous amount of hope and peace about mm. things I didn't know about. And it's so that. that there, there's, there's yeah. things happening um, with the film, but and there's a, there's someone that someone came to me, um, wrote me an email. Uh, I think it was a few days before it, it went out to theaters, and actually, uh, he reached out and he watched a screener cut of of, of the film. Um, he's actually a Sundance award-winning filmmaker. I won't say who it is, just kind of keep his name private. But he he doesn't believe in anything, 
and um, at least before. And so his dad had actually passed in between when he watched the screener to, you know, it's about to launch and he saw the bunch of the news, you know, that it's going to go to theaters. And he just, he's like, I, you know, I'm, I meant to write you this, but he said as it, he was there while his dad passed and as he's passing, he just couldn't help but think about the film and the stories that he, he saw all, all that time ago, which was, I think it was like six months prior. And he couldn't help but think about, you know, there, there has to be something more. There has mm -hmm. to be something more. And so after his dad passed, he just was thinking about what these people were describing in, in their, you know, near-death experiences. And, and he's just like, is that what my dad's experiencing right now? So, yeah, I think, I think this film could open that door for people to, you know, think mm -hmm. about life after. What's your response when somebody says, this is just a question I've got. I have a friend who's done psychedelics. And he gave me a book to read that was about psychedelics and in the book yeah it's talked about how if you take these psychedelics you get to experience death before death and right. so that there some of these guys are arguing they're saying well near-death experience is just the same as taking mushrooms your right. brain's just doing things hallucinate what 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 mm -hmm. how do you i know you're not the scientist you're the filmmaker but what what response mm -hmm. do you have to that well, we had the privilege of inter interviewing Dr. Rick Strossman, who uh, did the only federally uh, uh, funded and approved uh, study on DMT, and uh, which is a that's kind of the more popular sort of choice, but it's all hallucinogenics. It kind of does all the same thing. Um, yeah, people will say that DMT uh, can be the same as a near-death experience, but in his study, uh, he was comparing near-death experiences to what people are describing in the DMT trips. So he he himself hadn't necessarily studied, you know, at length near-death experiences, but he had the reports of what his patients uh, or his volunteers had had with the DMT trips. And there's sort of three things that came up uh, that uh, do not happen in those trips compared to near-death experiences. One is uh, there was no one that reported having a life review, which is very common in, in a near-death experience. They're, they're yeah, brought before angels or right. Jesus. Yeah, and they're seeing their whole life play. That or doesn't their happen ancestors. in these trips. Right. Yeah. And actually, that's another part of it is um, they don't see uh, dead relatives or, or family members or friends. Um, they don't come and talk, co come in contact with people that they, they knew uh, before that had passed or deceased be prior. So that doesn't happen. It's typically it's kind of like they feel like they, they, they went into an otherworldly re realm and they're seeing colors and, and which is, you know, some common descriptors of what, you know, an element of what people are describing in your experience. But it's much more beyond that. Okay. And um, we got one more question. Just waiting for the last one. It's, is it coming to Australian cinemas? I believe so. I don't think the dates are announced yet, though. But um, I mean, that's a, that's a common question we get. And it's not just Australia. It's, you know, everywhere. UK, Germany, mm -hmm. it's just coming to Brazil. We're hearing, you know, from so many people that want to see this in other countries. And I think that that's the goal. You know, we want to bring this yeah. to to more countries yeah we're talking i mean next week we're meeting with brazilian the brazilian teams about brazil so um that's the one i have more info on but uh i i know this this will this will roll out once they're successful they start rolling out around the world all right if you want to watch after death go to angel.com slash life after buy tickets or you can join the angel guild and get two free tickets to after death and all the other movies the angel studios has in theaters and you can help join the movement to build content that actually makes a difference in the world thank you steven for coming on with us appreciate yeah, it thank you so much for having real me. pleasure yeah. yeah i just i hope people come to the you know the second weekend especially you know if they're thinking of coming to the movie the second weekend you know this weekend coming up is the perfect time to go Yes, it is. It's like um, there are there are more theaters than there were last weekend, which means it's more likely to be in your area. And yeah. once the rush of opening weekend is gone, you're still going to be super busy on Friday and Saturday night, most likely. But there, there's a lot more space to be able to go in and just enjoy this experience. And it is a it is a very meditative experience. It's it's beautiful, mm -hmm. and you'll 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 come out a better person. <laughs>